pleasure to introduce a very, very good friend of mine. I was so fortunate, you may have heard of New Hampshire and our first in the nation presidential primary. And we had a lot of candidates uh, back in 2020. And one of those amazing candidates was Pete Buttigieg from New yeah. But I got a chance to campaign with Pete. He's a good friend. Please welcome Chastin's husband. So much. Thanks, Andy. Uh, Andy and I became friends when I was uh, running around New Hampshire trying to get known. And uh, in New Hampshire, they're very accustomed to being the center of the political universe. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think it's fitting that you have Andy Custer and a whole lot of other folks here, uh, folks who are from Michigan, even if I'm married into Michigan, uh, <laughs> folks who are lifelong Michiganders, and folks from uh, other parts of the country, because you are very much the center of the political universe right here. And I know that you're going to do everything that it takes to make sure that this district, this neighborhood, this county, this area propels a historic victory for Democrats up and down the ticket. <laughs> I'm doing everything I can to make sure that Kamala Harris is the next president of the United States. I know you are too. Before I get to why I'm doing that, uh, I want to recognize you for understanding that the presidency as epically important as it is, is not the only office that matters. Uh, you are here because you also understand that up and down the ticket, we've got critically important races, those, uh, those local races that are so close to home that are going to shape what it is like in your neighborhood and in your community where issues from economic development to public safety are at stake. The razor-thin, ultra-important House majority that Nate Shannon is going to be part of keeping, thank you for making sure that we keep that trifecta. Congress. So, uh, you know, there are moments where I think it's gotten so goofy up there that, that, that we think of it as a kind of like it's just a show, and you have to remind yourself, this is not a high school model of Congress. This is the actual United States Congress that writes laws that the rest of us have to live by. And it's led right now by a, a speaker who not only doesn't think people like me ought to be able to get married, he doesn't think straight people ought to be able to get divorced. Like, that's how it's <laughs> uh, the social agenda you have, right? To say nothing of the economic implications, is there's nowhere better to talk about it than here. The economic implications of either developing the manufacturing renaissance that we're experiencing, where you live and where I live, where when I was growing up they told us we're done making things, the union jobs are all gone, and right now you are proving that we can break the old false choice between doing the right thing for the environment and doing the right thing for the auto industry and manufacturing jobs because you were doing it right here with good Woo! people. Yeah. Woo! just what we are working to block and the madness that we're trying to hold at bay, it's also what we are working to build. And that's what I see in a leader like Carl Parlega. You are the center of the universe. Uh, uh, it's, it's, just, it's just the way it is. I can be in, I could be getting ready to do a TV show in New York City. I could be in the, in the Roosevelt Room of the White House, and somebody will come up to me and say, what's going on in Michigan? What do you think? It's just the way it is right now. Right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, people who couldn't find Macomb County on a map are still asking, how's it going in Macomb County? <laughs> Madam Chair, it's going just fine, right? <laughs> but uh, it's, that's because of you, and, and we got to sprint through the tape on this. And, uh, you know, the, the biggest thing I want to leave you with, you, you're here, you know how important this is, you know the issues. Uh, and, and, but I want to remind you of just a couple of things. First of all, on the issues, uh, us Democrats are accustomed to the feeling of pretty much assuming that whatever we believe in must be unpopular, right? We, should, we just form that kind of, kind of muscle memory over time. People are with us on issue after issue after issue. People get that we need to be creating more good paying union jobs in a way that's also compatible with America's clean energy and clean manufacturing future. 
people get, and I know this is close to home and a painful issue uh, here in this community, people get that if we're serious about keeping our young people safe, it's not about stopping them from being exposed to a politically unpopular book in their school library. It's about making sure assault weapons don't get anywhere near yeah. them. And by the way, I know a lot of Republicans, as well as most independents, as well as pretty much all Democrats get, that in a free country, you get to be who you are, you get to love yeah. who you love, yeah. and the right person to make a woman's health care decisions and reproductive decisions is that woman. <laughs> didn't have somebody on the other side of the ticket who is prompting even incredibly conservative Republicans and not just any old Republicans, but the ones who he chose to work for him, like his own chief of staff, to say, hey, this guy has no business coming anywhere near yeah. the White House. Yeah. Think about what that means. Yeah. Not only has there never been a time in American history where this many Republicans came out and said, vote Democrat, but there has never in American history been a time when a president's own chief of staff denounced him as an authoritarian. Right. Right. That's what we're dealing with right yes. now. But even if we weren't up against that, what we are for should be more than enough to propel the kinds of conversations. And you're having me made this year. You are doing the hardest and most important part of politics. And that's the other thing I wanted to ask you to take as your propulsion in these next few days. It is helpful uh, to... to Go on Fox News and have a zinger that goes around the internet. Like that, right? I love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was that, my unexpected specialty. Right? <laughs> it is helpful to to have uh, the, the the ads, even though I know they're. We're all ready to get to the other side of the ads, right? Uh, on our TV, it is helpful to have that direct mail flying. But by far, I mean, every piece of research has told us that the most important thing, the most effective thing, the thing that is most likely to help people uh, be convinced uh, on how to vote, and just as important as you well know, being convinced on whether to vote, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. The most important thing is somebody that you actually interact with, a friend, a neighbor, somebody from the same community knocking on that door saying, here's what it means. And you know, and I don't, what it means to you. You know why you're here. And it's going to be different for every one of you. Uh, you are an expert on what brought you into this fight. For me, it's, it's about our kids. Uh, and every parent becomes a parent and then immediately starts sounding like what they thought used to be a cliche. <laughs> There's no way without last year cliches to talk about. But that's, that's how I feel ever since three years ago we got that phone call the next day we're holding in our arms our, our son and our daughter who we're raising in Michigan and want to have a good future. It's so important to make sure that they grow up in a better Michigan and a better America than the one that was handed to us. It's, it's critically important. And that's going to take work. Uh, we're at the toddler phase where they come in sometimes in the middle of the night saying, uh, uh, that the, the monster is coming or that a dinosaur is going to get them. Uh, and uh, and I, I do what any dad would do, which is you know reassure them, okay, I'm going to do a perimeter check just to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> I got some dinosaur spray in the basement. I'll, 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 I'll cover. But, but don't you worry about a thing. I got you covered. No dinosaur is going to get you at night. Right? Um, and it feels good as a parent to make a promise to your kid that you're 100% sure is going to come through. <laughs> no effort. <laughs> but uh, we're really important. I just want to make sure our kids are going to take an effort. Right? I want to make just as, as 100% sure, I, I want to make just as good a promise to my daughter that she will not have lived to see the high watermark of rights and freedoms in American society, but rather she will have more rights and freedoms than I will. Yeah. Yeah. about stuff like what lunch table to sit at, not yeah. whether they're going to be physically safe. That takes work. Yeah. 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 I want my son and daughter to grow up and live and thrive in uh, an authentically representative multiracial democracy, which yeah. is exactly what yeah. you yeah. That is the goal, and this 
this is the work, and you're doing it. Which means I'm not going to take more than one more minute being in between you and getting out there and actually doing that work. Because this is the very stuff of democracy. And this is the stuff that's going to make us proud by the time my kids are old enough to ask. And I'm sure it won't take that long uh, for them to be looking in the eye and say, Papa, in the 2020s, when I wasn't old enough to know what was going on, but you were old enough to be in a position of responsibility to shape whether the world I was going to grow up into got better or got worse, what did you do? What were you doing? And I don't want to say I was sitting there playing Wordle and I was I was hanging out by the pool and I was comfortable in, in my relationship. I want to say that I was out there on the ground in places like Macomb County, Michigan, where yeah, yeah, yeah. But make no mistake, I'll I'll, I'll end where I, I began. This is not just about the White House, as cosmically as important as the direction of the presidency is. This is about the United States House of Representatives, uh, where Annie has been doing such extraordinary work uh, over the years shaping that better future for our kids, where they actually originate the laws, uh, good, bad, and indifferent, that all of us have to live by that shape uh, whether we're going to go in the right direction or the wrong direction. We need somebody with wisdom. We need somebody with judgment. We need somebody with roots. Uh, we need somebody who demonstrated, by the way, when frankly, like a lot of famous and, and, and uh, 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 well-connected national political organizers were not paying a whole lot of attention to this district, did things people didn't think were possible. Right. Yes. Um, yes. Now it's time to make sure that he gets over the line, becomes the next United States. Yeah. <laughs> Judge, the real Pete Buttigieg introduced. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, uh, Todd Davis out there uh, gave the uh, the signal yeah. where we are in the map. He's from Michigan. He knows I know. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> he knows back at DC. Yeah. 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 He knows all our things. Okay, so um, I, I do want a special thanks uh, to, to Pete for uh, coming in and introducing me. Uh, I'm sure everybody here will join in what I'm thinking now. Is that when you hear Pete Buttigieg speak, um, it's, it's not only that you hear him speak, you can hear him think, you can hear him reason, you can hear him bring facts and logic and reason together in a way that you don't hear in American politics. <laughs> well, maybe with John Kennedy or Barack Obama or others, I mean, we, we, we've heard it before, but I don't think anybody's at the pinnacle of saying important things succinctly, logically, and persuasively and in such a pleasant manner mm -hmm. as Pete. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Also, and I don't want to embarrass, well, no, I do want to embarrass somebody, but I think there's one additional comment, that eight years from now, after the new age of enlightenment, uh, enlightenment with the Harris administration, yeah. we are going to be searching for a new president of the United <laughs> States. <laughs> Yeah, that guy introduced me once. <laughs> <laughs>